Uh, who needs to be engaged in the process? Well, all the agencies above that we just talked about, really. Um, however, society is going to be divided, usually governmental, which would include the military and the and the various government departments, civic society, which will be non-political in some ways. I, I think um, in Africa, you have to add the dimension of what one might call tribal society and tribal authority. And so I've had good numbers of discussions in various places. For example, what's the precise relationship between Museveni's government and the King of Buganda? And, and no one really knows what the answer to that question is. And there's a certain tension between the two institutional ways of being society. Um, and the kingdoms of Uganda, with their historic resonance, uh, sometimes don't sit easily with the current political processes. And so, yes, the government needs to be involved, but the king of Buganda, for example, in Kampala, um, also needs to get on board with this so that those of his followers who look to him rather than the government for direction are also engaged in rethinking these processes. And I think tribal identity is not often understood properly uh, in these issues and therefore neglected because Western agencies always want to work through faith-based organisations or third sector agencies or government or school or something, civic society. They know all those terms. But because tribalism is such an alien concept in Western culture, very little work's been done to think about how tri tribalism is... Uh, um, drawn into this debate and how tribal authority is used to shape attitudes. In fact, it's much quicker to use tribal authority because if the chief says it, it gets done. Mm. Um, usually in a way that, that is far less needing of explanation and work. Interesting. Mm. Paul, is, Paul is some steps... Uh, removed or linked to the king of Buganda, I think through his wife. Ah. Yeah, maybe we should explore that for you. Hmm. Yeah, well, I, I was invited by the Prime Minister uh, in the Masindi region to meet the king. Yeah. Um, but I didn't have time. I was flying back, coming back to Kampala and flying home the next day. Yeah. So on the last visit but one. Yeah. And, and, uh, I, I wanted to meet him because I'd given a speech to local parliamentarians in Masindi and the mayor and government officials about, because they'd asked me to address the question of why was it that all the additional Hoima oil wealth had produced such difficult social problems with all the money coming into young people working in the oil industry and the spread of drugs and so on, and how you could have a value-based world in which did money always mean corruption, in other words? And the answer is yes. yes. Which individuals or which personalities are those that have the greatest influence or the greatest power? And the answer is the gatekeepers in each of the silos of power. Okay. So uh, it might not be the prime minister, it might be a president or it might be someone in the president's office. It's someone who gets things onto the power broker's agenda. Identifying the gatekeepers in the silos of government, church, uh, you know, your Andrew Wangays or EA, Evangelical Alliance leadership, or the head of the biggest Pentecostal denomination, or the, the gatekeepers with some power, and the heads of, again, that might be a tribal issue. The king of Buganda might be a gatekeeper if, if what he says goes with the Buganda people. That might be very significant in terms of changing attitudes. So it's identifying the gatekeeper people, those with formal power. And, and then there are a bunch of sentries who man the gates. And they're the people with informal power. And they're harder to identify because they don't usually have a title or a role. But because of their age or experience or standing in their silo, 
they have, they wield enormous influence informally and they they can they can get you to the gatekeeper even without and you you no idea who they are mm. but sometimes they're quite low down in an organization but by virtue of a family connection or by virtue of longevity or outstanding service or it might be a freak that, that they are a tv personality or it could be anything that, that gives them access to the gatekeepers that that gets you to the table where people make powerful decisions mm. and so start to shape issues around children's rights and and uh, and family integration actually for that matter 